News Live, 10 at 10. It's basically scarring of your lung tissue. So the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide doesn't really happen anymore. And it's harder and harder to breathe. And so progressively, this can cause permanent damage to people's lungs. And unfortunately, lung transplants would be about the only thing that could help those folks. New evidence is raising health concerns surrounding the use of electronic cigarettes. Thanks for joining us. A new study found that popular flavors of e-cigs contain a chemical called diacetyl linked to severe lung disease. Valley News Team's Krista Baim has details on the higher risk. As the owner of e-cig Empire, Michael Albrecht has seen electronic cigarettes work as an alternative to actual cigarettes. I've tried the gum, I've tried cold turkey, I've tried a lot of other ways. It's actually how he quit smoking and how his business got going and kept going. With an 85% return rate, this, he says, is the safer option. It's much less harmful. It's never going to be completely safe. The best air to breathe is just pure air. But from a respiratory therapist standpoint, there's no research to back that up. Harm versus harm reduction. I guess, you know, can I cut off part of your leg or your whole leg? I, I mean, it, to me, it's almost a moot point because it's like if you can have an alternative that's not going to be harmful to you, why would you not be using that to help you stay away from something that we know is causing harm? The most recent study tested 51 flavored e-cigs and found all but four with at least one hazardous flavoring chemical and 39 contained diacetyl linked to life-threatening lung disease. These flavors may be FDA approved for eating, for ingestion, but nobody talks about inhalation. Debbie Farnham says the actual FDA approved resources they have in nicotine replacement do work as a better, healthier option. They work about 36% of the time versus 2 to 3% on cold turkey. Now there's no direct comparison that I've studied yet that's showing e-cigarettes as a way to quit smoking. But it's the studies against e-cigs Albrecht doesn't agree with. There's no numbers behind it. The only numbers that they do claim is the amount of flavors that a chemical was found in. Um, cigarettes themselves have about a hundred times higher uh, contents of diacetyl in them. But what both agree on is a lack of education on what and how much is inside the growing trend to vape. Krista Baim, Valley News Live. Now, we did check with Sanford, which has not seen any cases connected to diacetyl and e-cigarettes, but there are some other concerns surrounding e-cigs, including a drop in lung functions. The Wilkin County Sheriff's Office is still looking for a man who robbed a Roth State Minnesota bank at gunpoint this afternoon. It all happened at the Farmers State Bank. The robber was wearing gray Carhartt jeans, brown dress shoes, a navy blue sweatshirt with yellow stripes and white drawstrings. The sheriff's office says the robber pointed a gun at the teller and demanded money. Investigators don't know yet how much money was taken. They believe the robber ran from the bank and drove off in a vehicle parked nearby. But at this time, there's no vehicle description. We will have the, the same amount of squads as, uh, as we always have out, I guess. And, um, you know, once... Uh, once this gets a little bit more involved, we're hoping we'll be getting some tips from uh, the people around town that maybe you've seen something go on today. Sheriff's deputies from Ottertail County, the Minnesota State Patrol, DNR, and the FBI are also involved in the investigation. If you know anything, you're asked to call the sheriff's office at 218-643-8544. We're going to have more information as it becomes available. Fargo school board members gave themselves an automatic pay raise each year. The board voting five to three to get the same annual increase by percentage that all employees of the district get. Some members said tonight that despite uncomfortable discussions each year over pay raises, they need to happen. In the interest of public transparency, this kind of disconnects from that. That all being said, we're talking 20 maybe a $30 annual adjustment. So it's not like we're trying to pull the wool over the public's eyes. But I actually think the conversation is of value. And this takes the conversation right out of the equation. Other board members tonight said that those conversations would still be held each January as it is now. The pay raise takes effect July 1st of this year. 
The cost of oil plummeted below $30 a barrel today for the first time since December 2003. Now, what's good news for drivers with gas prices around that $1.60 mark is bad news for oil producers. The latest wave of selling leaves crude oil down 19% this year alone. It represents an incredible 72% plunge from crude oil's June 2014 peak of almost $108. And that means the price that you're paying for gas in Fargo will continue to fall. GasBuddy.com reports that the lowest cost per gallon in the area is $160. You can find that at Mills Fleet Farm. And more than a handful of stations along 13th Avenue South in Fargo are also charging low prices. The average per gallon in Fargo is $1.66. Across the state of North Dakota, it's $1.84, and the average price across our country is $1.95 a gallon. President Barack Obama delivered his seventh and final State of the Union address tonight. This was his final address, and he focused on the challenges and opportunities that will impact the United States for generations to come, rather than just the year ahead. The president not only touted his accomplishments and defended his remaining goals, but said failing to change the tone of politics is one of the few regrets of his presidency. It's Tuesday and time for another restaurant report card. This week, we take a closer look at restaurants in the Fargo and the downtown Fargo area. Valley News Team's Christine Stanwood has the latest report. We made our first stop at Chuck E. Cheese. They were written up for having expired ham and a dirty ice machine. Both items were corrected at the time of the inspection, and management tells us that they have put extra signs up in the back, making sure staff knows to keep track of dates. We traveled downtown to King House Buffet, where they got a critical violation for storing raw meat over ready-to-eat foods. They also were docked for a dirty can opener. Management assures us that all was corrected at the time of inspection. We walked down Broadway to Dempsey's to try to talk to staff. However, they were closed at the time of our arrival. Dempsey's was advised by the health department to not store beer cans in the ice machine used to mix drinks. In Fargo, Christine Stanwood, Valley News Live. And this week's Clean Plate Award winner was a previous offender that's cleaned up their act this week. Noodles and Company near 25th Street South in Fargo had a spotless inspection from the health department. To catch this report and all others, head to valleynewslive.com. Do you have a Powerball ticket yet? If you do, you better check it out carefully. About $2 billion in lottery prizes go unclaimed each year. Many of those tickets are worth between $1 and $5, but some people never realize that they have a life-changing prize right in their pocket. Brett Jacobson, developer of an app called Lotto Lotto, says roughly 114 prizes worth $1 million or more went unclaimed in 2015. Jacobson adds that there tends to be more unclaimed prizes associated with a massive drawing like the current estimated $1.5 billion prize. Artisan Home Furniture, the furniture store that sells high-end luxury furniture, will soon be closing its showroom. The business will have a closeout sale starting at 9 a.m. this Saturday, January 16th. Everything in the store will be liquidated, and all floor models will be deeply discounted until all remaining floor inventory is sold. Now, one of the designers at Artisan will be launching a new Fermi Studios in a location to be named later. Tara Fermoyle says she will continue to service existing Artisan customers and will be taking over all design and customer order services that were previously provided by Artisan. And Fermoyle says that customers can continue to order furniture and design services on a custom order basis through her. Valley